Did you make any close friendships while in the service? Well, uh, yes, I made a lot of a lot of close friendships. Uh, a lot of people tried to distance themselves from from calling it a friendship. You say, well, you have people that you deployed with, people that you worked with. You made acquaintances, but you didn't really make friends. But that's not true, because the longer that you stay in the military, the more real, real good friends that you're able to make. Because sometimes you end up following each other to different commands. You end up running into people that you served with a few years ago. Uh, now they're back in the same ship with you, and you're able to, to resume that friendship that you had before. And one of the big things that I, I want to do now, now that I'm in college in the teacher education program, I want to be a teacher in the Department of Defense Education Activity, basically to teach the, the children of active duty service members overseas. So I'm hoping that I'll actually be able to run into some, some of these people that I served with before that are still in now that I'm I don't know that I'm civilian, they're still in the military. Hopefully I can, I can reestablish some of those friendships again. Did you continue any of those friendships or relationships? Uh, not, not really, not as much as I hoped I, I would have been able to. Uh, maybe if I can find some of them, find their email addresses, maybe find them on Facebook, I'd love to be able to be able to chat with them again, but but no, nobody, nobody from the military. Did you join a veterans organization? I was in the veterans of foreign wars and the. Oh, I don't know the name of the American Legion. I joined the VFW and the American Legion, but I wasn't really satisfied with the, either of those two organizations. I, they really don't appeal to today's generation or the, the new people serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I think even they re, have realized that, but they really haven't really stepped up to the plate as far as supporting today's military members. So I had to tell them both, uh, thank you for your service, goodbye, but I can't really join them anymore. What did you go on? Oh. Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Um, I certainly have opinions about current wars that are going on right now. I can appreciate the, the sacrifices that military members make while at the same time be sort of dissatisfied with some of the leadership, some of the decisions that are made by by politicians and congressmen. Uh, but as far as serving in the military, having the chance to serve your country, especially having the chance to serve your country overseas, and the, the role the, the military is playing in, in sort of the, uh, the international world that we're playing in establishing good uh, friendships with, with people of other nations, that is a very good aspect of military service that I really liked. <clears throat> How did your service and experiences affect your life? Well, it, it had only both a positive and a negative impact. Uh, from the tremendous amount of time that I spent overseas and experiencing different people, different different cultures, uh, different lifestyles, it. it it really informed my my decision to become a history and social studies teacher, but it also had a negative effect. The many years of uh, separation from my family and from my friends it really did take a very difficult toll on my ability to establish good relationships with even uh, members of my own family, and that's a very very difficult thing that a lot of service members have to go through. Is there anything you would like to add that we have not covered in this interview? There are certain changes that are being made to the military, which I find to be uh, very good changes. Uh, right now we, are, we have seen the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, so gay and lesbian service members could be able to serve openly without uh, having fear of being kicked out of the military because they sleep with somebody of the wrong gender. 
And most of the people in the military see this as a very, very good thing, that somebody shouldn't have to be dishonorably discharged for, like I said, something that only affects them in their private lives. You see a, a rise of people in the military that are atheists, that are agnostics, that are non-religious, and some people have some negative opinions about uh, non-religious people. Now, like I said earlier in the interview, my own religious views have changed. I now consider myself atheist. And I, it's not just in the military, even in, in outside world, in the civilian sector, there's some negative opinions about uh, outspoken atheists and agnostics and non-religious people. That the military really does uh, try to be as, as inclusive, uh, the word is ecumenical as possible, because you're serving with people of all types of different religious beliefs, different cultures, different worldviews, all of them that have to come together into one unit and be co cohesive. And that's difficult to do, but when people have respect and dignity for the beliefs and worldviews of other people, then you're able to come together as, as one unit. Thank you for allowing us to interview to you today. Yes. Thank you for having me.